Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we are learning how to split polygons using the Insert Edge Loop tool and the Multicut tool. Let's jump in. Okay, let's learn about the Insert Edge Loop tool first. I'm going to place a cube in the scene and I'm going to isolate it by pressing the Isolate button, pressing F to frame in. And to get to the Insert Edge Loop tool, it won't be in your Modeling Toolkit. You have to go up to Mesh Tools, and here's Insert Edge Loop. Also, if you have your mesh selected, I can hold down Shift, hold down the right mouse button, and it's here as well. For now, let's get to it from up here, and go to Mesh Tools, and then choose the Option box. Just going to reset the tool, just to make sure it's reset. And to insert an edge loop, what you want to do is click down on an edge until you see this dotted line appear. That's the edge loop. And you can drag to where you want it. And when you let go, Maya will place an edge loop around that mesh. Now, I can also insert multiple edge loops. So right here, you have multiple edge loops option. Click on that. And when you click on your mesh, you'll have multiple edge loops depending on what you've selected. So you can choose how many you would like. Um, it also keeps your edge loops um, highlighted. So if I wanted to transform them, I can go into one of my tools. So for example, I can increase the distance between this by pressing the scale tool. And now I can increase that distance. So that's the insert edge loop tool. I want to show you one more thing with it. Just move this off to the side. I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to create a slope on one side. I'm going to grab this edge, just pull it off to the side a little bit. And I'm going to go back to my Insert Edge Loop tool. And rather than go up here, um, in your um, modeling um, toolbox, at the very bottom is the last tool you used, and which was our Insert Edge Loop tool. Click on that one to get back to it. And if the tool window is closed for whatever reason, you can also double click it. And that'll bring it back. And now let's reset the tool. And I'm going to click on this edge, and you'll see something that happened. The, it has the edge loop, but you can see that it has a little bit of curve. And the more I drag it to this side where the slope is, the more it will um, try and recreate that, that um, angle. If I let go, right? You can see how much of an angle is there. And if I um, click on here and let go, you can see how straight it is there. And everything in between will be an average of the two sides. If I didn't want that, for example, I'm just going to undo a couple times here. Get rid of those. I can choose equal distance from edge. And now when I click, if I click on this half of the mesh, it's going to keep it straight, even if I drag it all the way down there. And this will be really useful for your modeling. I'm going to Control-Z. If I click on this half of the edge, it's going to create this angle. And those two will be the same angle. Yeah, so that's the Insert Edge Loop tool. And we'll get to know more about it just through um, using it in practical examples. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to close this window. And now let's look at the Multicut tool. I'm going to place a cube in the scene again. And um, to get to the Multicut tool, there's an option in your Modeling Toolkit. You'll also see that you can get to it from the Poly Modeling Shelf, so this icon. You can get to it through Mesh Tools, so Multicut. Or if you have your mesh selected, holding down the Shift key, holding down the right mouse button, and you can get to it from Multicut. And with the modeling, um, sorry, with the Multicut tool, it's very similar to um, the Insert Edge Loop tool in a way, but it has a, it's more versatile. So first, let's look at how it's similar. If I move to an edge and where it's highlighted, if I hold down the Control key, you'll see that you can place an edge, right? And if I drag my mouse, I can um, left click on the left mouse button, 
and it'll place a loop around there. So that's pretty useful. I'm gonna just control Z again as well. If I hold down the control key and I middle mouse click, it'll place down a loop in the middle. And you'll find you'll be using that quite a bit. I'm gonna hit control Z again. And, but with the multi-cut tool, you can also uh, place um, cuts. So for example, if I start on a vertex here, left click, click on there. So you, you hover the mouse over where, until you see it light up, left click. Then I can click on my faces or my face, I should say. And it's going to start putting cuts along there. And I can close it by clicking here. And to really finalize it, you can press enter or the right mouse button. So I'm going to press enter and it completes that. So now I have um, a new polygon. I can, again, click on here, click on here, click on here, click on here, right? So that it completes it. And then to finalize it, just press enter. I'm just going to place a, a couple more cuts, press enter or the right mouse button, place a, place a cut there, there. And now I have some more quads, right? So I have this quad in the middle, I can move it. And I've recreated my geometry. Yeah, so that is the multi-cut tool. And I think the best thing to do is just to start using these um, tools with our props. I'm gonna delete this, go out of isolation mode, and let's start um, working on some of these other objects. Okay, let's use our new tools with some of the props in our scene. I want to work on the TV stand some more, so I'm going to select it, isolate it, and I want to give it a bevel. Um, holding down the shift key, holding down the right mouse button, adding that bevel to it. Here we go. And then what I want is a storage area but just in the middle. And I can do that by adding a couple edge loops and extruding. So we can do that with the insert edge loop tool, insert edge loop, and then clicking on our mesh, it's set to two. And I can increase the distance from that from just scaling. So open up the scale tool, and there we go. And then I can select this face here, offset it by going into extrude. So holding down shift, Right mouse button, extrude, I'm gonna close this so I can see what's happening. Give this an offset. So first that's too strong. Hitting G to repeat. Then you just drag this in. And I can't really see how far I'm pushing it in, so I'm going to wireframe. And there we go. Exit wireframe, go into object mode. And I'm going to exit isolate. Here we go. We have a TV stand. At this angle, um, I think we can get away with out giving it some um, feet, right? But if we wanted to, we can create some cylinders and give it some feet. I'll leave that up to you guys, how you guys want to take it further. Um, next, let's work on this floor shelf thingy. So I'm going to frame in on it, and I want to isolate. And what I want to do is create a couple storage areas, but have it go all the way through, like it's hollow. And I don't want to use the um, insert edge loop tool. I want to have it more uneven or customized, just basically to get practice with the multi-cut tool. So I'm going to select multi-cut. I'm going to hold down control, and I'm going to put an, uh, a loop here. And then what I want to do is offset these two faces, select both of them, go into extrude, give it an offset. But you can see that it's keeping the face together. I don't want that, so I'm going to check this. And now my faces are separate. And I'm actually going to delete these faces. So I just have this uh, front area. And I'm also going to delete these faces. Delete those, and now I have this. So I can go into object mode, go into extrude, and I can extrude this out. 
and back into object mode, we'll exit isolate. And there we go, we have a, a floor shelf. Um, by the way, when you delete faces and such, your pivot point will um, retain its original um, position. So if you ever want to reset it, just hit the reset tool up here. And that will reset it back to its center. And what I want to do is move this pivot point to the bottom and bring it to the ground. So I can hold down D, hold down V, drag this down, and then hold down X and snap it to the ground. There we go. All right, so we have this, we have this. Um, last thing I want to work on is this door. <clears throat> so let's choose the door. I'm going to push it in a little bit, scale it out a little bit. And again, I want that pivot on the bottom. So I'm going to hold down D, hold down V, snap it to there, then hold down X and make sure I'm snapped to the ground. Door is pretty good, maybe a little bit taller. And just a touch taller, there we go. And let's isolate this. So pressing our isolate button. And what I want to do is create a door frame. So I'm going to select these three faces, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to extrude. So I'm holding down shift, holding down right mouse button, extrude. I'm going to give it some thickness. And that should be pretty good. And then I want to extrude out the door frame. So I'm going to select these three faces and extrude again. And just drag this out. I'm going to go back into object mode and let's go out of isolation so you guys can see what I'm going for. I want to put a cut right here that will create a couple panels. So I can do that with the multi-cut. So selecting multi-cut. Um, holding down control and then clicking and now I have this edge and then I select can select these faces these two and I can extrude again give it an offset so I'm holding down control and dragging this so for a little more precision and then I'm gonna select this so that I have separate faces and then what I want to do is go back into object mode for a second I want to bevel these edges here where the panels are. So I'm going to go into edge mode and select the, these um, edges. And then I want to bevel. So holding down shift, holding down the right mouse button, bevel, reduce the fraction. And then I want to create another offset. So I'm going to select these faces. So I'm selecting that one, holding down shift, Double clicking this one, same thing, same thing with here. Um, selecting that one, holding down shift, double clicking that one. And then I wanna extrude so that I can create my offset. This time I'm holding down shift and control to be more precise. And I can now, actually let make it a little further and I can push this in now. There we go. Now we have a couple of panels. Yeah, so I think that should be good for this episode. It's getting kind of long and our objects are a little further long and we were able to accomplish it with more tools that we've learned. And that wraps up another one for us. We're moving along quite nicely. Uh, thank you for tuning in and we will see you in the next one.